everyone, my name is Melissa from Inspire Me ASAP. And in today's video, I want to share with you ideas of how I kick off my new Reader's Workshop unit to my students. I set the stage to engage my students with our new nonfiction unit by incorporating a detective theme. And in this video, I will explain the props, strategies, and ideas that will help keep your students motivated to learn and ultimately become a very official nonfiction text detective. So just like I introduced to you what this video is going to be about, I introduced to my students what their new Reader's Workshop unit is going to be about by dressing up in this costume and saying, boys and girls, I want you to take a few seconds to listen to the song. I usually have one or two students who can identify that that is a detective theme. It's the Mission Impossible theme song. And I tell them, yes, you are correct. Boys and girls, I'm so excited to start my new nonfiction unit with you where you are going to become official text detectives. And I introduce to them on this very first day their own top secret envelope, which has all of their missions inside. Now I call the missions for this unit, I call the mini lessons for this unit, the missions. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I say mini, mini lessons, mini lessons. But for this unit, I tell my students that boys and girls, instead of having mini lessons, you will be having a mission every day for our reading workshop time. And I have them pull out their very official text feature flip book. They give me a thumbprint with the ink pad and they say that, yes, I accept my missions. Now, in order to pass each mission, they have to be able to independently identify the text feature that I taught that, excuse me, that I taught that day. So, for example, if I taught my students about photographs and captions and how they go together like peanut butter and jelly and I explicitly taught them that. If that was the mini lesson or the mission for that reading workshop day, then my students would have to be able to independently find examples or find evidence, find proof, find evidence of that inside of their own nonfiction book and then write about that text evidence that they found in their nonfiction flip book. And if they do that correctly, they pass. When they pass all of the different text features and all of the different text features are the ones that I want to teach them about, that I want them to know about. Some of them are on this anchor chart here. Once they can show me that they can independently do that, they pass those in, um, individual uh, missions, then they are ready for their final interview. And this is just a fun way that I jazz up a reading conference. And I just put a fun little twist on it. And I tell my students, one by one, I will be interviewing you to see if you pass for your official title of a text detective. And what I do during this interview, just like I did for you at the intro, is I make sure that I'm all dressed up in my uniform. I have my students also. I have from Melissa and Doug, a really adorable um, detective costume that I have them put on. And I interview them just as I would in much more serious tone, by the way, um, just like I would in a reading conference. And I'd begin by saying, tell me the book that you're reading about. And then we jump into the meat and potatoes of the conference. And I would tell them, find me an example of a photograph and a caption. Find me an example of a graph. Graph. I want you to find evidence of, for example, a subheading. Show me where the non or show me where the table of contents are. 
show me a word that's in the glossary. So I would have them, I, each student be interviewed one at a time, and that's how they would pass their final test to become a text detective. Now you might be wondering, well, what happens if they pass and do all the students pass? Yes, all the students pass, and some students might need some more support. So I might have their informational text bookmark right in front of them that they can use to help, or they have the anchor chart that they can look at. But this isn't a gotcha game that I'm playing. All my students pass. We're just doing this for fun. Some just need more support than others, but the goal is to get every child to successfully identify those nonfiction text features. And when they do pass, they get their very official congrats letter. You passed your final mission and you are a true nonfiction text detective. And I tell them that they passed, their status is cleared, I sign my name, they sign their name. A lot of my students have nicknames, so I think that's fun. They put their nickname, their secret code name, and then they get their official badge. So just like the teacher has her badge, and I literally just use this from a conference that I attended a few years ago, um, they get their own badge as well. And then they get to wear this badge any time that they are reading a nonfiction book during our reading time. I've had students say um, when the reading intervention teacher comes to pick them up, can I get my text detective badge? Absolutely. Are you reading a nonfiction book? Yes, we are. Okay, then yes, you can have your badge. Just as a fun way to get them excited about their independent reading time or their guided reading time or whatever it is that you're doing during that reading block. I hope that this has inspired you to try some um, different ways to incorporate um, these nonfiction text features into your own unit. If you are looking for any of the resources that I shared in this video, I will put links in the description below. Thank you.